Nitenan guys, I welcome you back for this episode um, today. First, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. Today, this video may be a little bit longer than the previous ones. Um, I wanted to share something um, a little bit more in depth and various things that is going on. The first thing I wanted to share was, um, before meeting Swamiji, I had this realization. At that time, I used to um, read about Buddha and then I read and listened to Osho and then I read and uh, mainly listened to Ramana Marshi and then I moved towards Swamiji uh, Paramamsa Nityananda at that time, now Nityananda Paramashivam. Uh, delusion. In the West, we have this general understanding of God. Generation, operation, destruction. He creates, he maintains, sustains, and then he destroys. And these are basically his activities. God is the embodiment of these three activities. One major component which we are not uh, taught about or aware of or even cognize as Westerners is this, the principle of Oh, I don't know if we can call it a principle, but this concept is, seems a little bit too philosophical and too unreal. But understanding of delusion. What is delusion? Paramashiva, in Hinduism, Paramashiva, he has five actions, not three. He does generate, he does sustain, he does destroy, or rejuvenate would actually be the best word. It is not a destruction for the sake of destruction. It's a destruction for... Uh, creation of the new, allowing rejuvenation to happen. When something is stuck in a pattern and is no longer radiating life, that gets dissolved and, and something new comes back to life um, that will be radiating more and more of that life energy. So that is the rejuvenation dimension. After that, there is delusion and liberation. So delusion is... In Sanatana Hindu Dharma, what we seek is liberation. It is moksha. Moksha means we are free from the endless cycle of birth and death that we are stuck into because of the delusion that we um, have created for ourselves ultimately. We are responsible for the delusion that we experience. But initially we don't realize and we don't understand how we are responsible for it. We feel it is... Uh, well, initially we might not even feel it exists. When we start to realize that it exists, we do not feel like it is self-generated. We feel it is imposed on us. And then at some point, as the spiritual understandings go deeper and deeper within us, we start to realize that we are responsible for that delusion and we are cherishing it uh, in various ways. And when we start to, when that starts to be cognized, then the desire to go beyond that, to stop generating this delusion, uh, starts to happen in us more and more with more and more intensity. And this is where I want to bring the guru-disciple relationship because you cannot even cognize the necessity of having a master, of having a guru, of surrendering to the feet of the master, surrendering to Swamiji, to um, an avatar, because... You cannot have this cognition until you realize that delusion exists and that uh, and the desire or the yearning to go beyond this delusion starts to blossom in you. So that is important. When that yearning, when that intense desire starts to rise in your inner space, then it starts to make sense to you to uh, the idea of surrendering and going beyond. Um, that's why we have to live intensely. We have to be authentic in the way we exist. We have to give everything we have. Only then we realize that uh, we are stuck and some blind spots we are cherishing. And to remove these blind spots, we need to be guided. We need to uh, surrender to, um, to an enlightened master, to an avatar, to a guru that can guide us beyond what we call in Sanatana Hindu Dharma, the ocean of samsara, the ocean of... Um, endless delusion, I would say. And that is a very, very, very important component. And that is why guru-disciple relationship is the most sacred because it is the only relationship which will allow you to make you realize that you are generating this delusion and that you will be able to stop generating this delusion. So that is a very important component that should not be missed 
and uh, forgotten at any way in any way. Um, another thing that I wanted to tag along with this uh, understanding of delusion is Sanatana Hindu Dharma is there. It is the only lifestyle which allows you to uh, take full ownership of your life, of your existence. It is the only lifestyle which makes you experience the experience of Paramashivoham. You are the ultimate Paramashiva. And that powerful cognition is the only cognition which, when, which can allow you to cross the ocean of samsara or to uh, dispel the delusion that you are um, generating for yourself and stuck into, kind of. And um, one thing that Swamiji just made available recently is the path of apat sannyas. So the Hinduism, Sanatana Hindu Dharma that we know today exists because of one of great incarnation, Adi Shankara, Adi Guru, Adi Shankara Acharya. He came and Hinduism was in a very bad shape at his time. So he came, Paramashiva assumed the body of Adi Shankara Acharya and uh, he revived the Hinduism that we know, um, that, that we know today. And the path of Apat Sanyas is the path that Adi Shankara Acharya took. Apat Sanyas is taking Sanyas not only for the sake of liberation, but also to protect Hinduism. The vows of Sanyas are nothing but fundamental, powerful cognitions, which are that which Hinduism is established into. By living these cognitions, you stand for Sanatana Hindu Dharma, you stand for Hinduism. And like that, you uh, fight or you protect the Dharma, you protect um, the lifestyle which can allow any being to free uh, himself, herself uh, from the delusion. But for that, free, for that liberation to happen, we need to have the lifestyle available. So the path of Apat Sanyas is the path that is, uh, that is taken from that context, uh, not only from a context of liberation, but also from a context of protection. So Swamiji has made it available, the path of Apat Sanyas, to protect Swamiji because he is being uh, constantly targeted by anti-spiritual um, elements, anti-Hindu elements, and anybody who is actually not interested in going beyond delusion. And also the lifestyle, because he is reviving uh, the nation of Kailasa, which is the only Hindu nation which, will, which has the only purpose of making the authentic Hindu lifestyle available to people so that people can practice their religion freely. So that is what I wanted to share in this video today. So uh, yes, naturally I took Abbas Sanyas. And uh, if you're interested to know more about it, leave a comment below, let me know. You can contact me on Facebook. The link is in the description below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Oh yeah, guys, I'm finishing the, I would say, I don't know, a general training of learning how to produce music. So I'm about to release a few remixes, Kailasa remixes about songs, um, about the nation of Kailash and about uh, the greatness of Paramashiva and Guru. So keep posted. Uh, one of them I exported today, so I think within a few days it will be released. So uh, be, be, be on the awareness side and catch it once it comes out. I think it's pretty nice. So with this I'll see you guys in the next video. Nityandam.